how far have you come and how long of a process is it to get to where you're comfortable calling a game? Man, hard questions out of the gate. Um, it all starts once you get drafted and have those those meetings with higher ups and how they want you to develop and stuff. And uh, it's been a work in progress. There's been a lot of a lot of mis misfortunate calls in my career, um, but it, it's it's a work. It's always a work in progress. You always get better. Um, starts with pregame reports and scouting reports and and goes from there. I think the bottom line is. If you know your staff, you, if you know your staff, then you're going to be in good shape. Mike Maddox called you the unsung hero, basically, of this team. I mean, what you do is very important, but what, what do you say to that? I mean, how do you feel about your role on this team? Uh, I'd, I'd say that's some pretty high praise from from a guy like Mike. Um, I, honestly, I'm just out there doing my job, trying to trying to help this staff put up some zeros and and put us in position to win. Um, when we can do that, when our staff is firing on all cylinders and, and we're putting up zeros, then we have a really good chance of winning, especially with our offense. So um, I, I thank Mike for the praise, but uh, I'm just out there doing my job and, and trying to give this team the best chance to win. I, I think we talked about this in Tampa, but you've caught a, a lot of games in a row, and I know that was a emphasis for you coming into this season. But I mean, how difficult was that coming into this year just to be able to, to get your body right, to be able to physically do that? I don't think it was difficult. I think it was it was exciting. Um, just getting that opportunity to come in here and play every day. It's it's what everybody dreams of is being an everyday player in the big leagues and and getting that opportunity has has been amazing. And uh, can't can't thank the training staff enough for for keeping me on the field. And um, it's it's been a team effort. And obviously it's a hard position and it's grueling, but uh, every second has been worth it. John, when you got dealt here two years ago, and obviously I don't think the switch hitting young catcher was the big name in that trade back then, but what did you envision when you found out you were getting traded to Texas? And obviously, you know, at the time there wasn't a clear path right away for you to be here in the position you're in right now. Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, as a young kid, I, I always loved the state of Texas. I, I know UT was my dream school. Um, for some reason, growing up watching them on ESPN was, was pretty cool. So, um, but yeah, coming here, um, Probably uh, Oakland gave me my shot, um, so we, we thought that was cool, and uh, we didn't know what to expect, but coming here was probably the best thing that could ever happen in my career. Um, getting with Bobby and, and this coaching staff has, has changed my career in a big way, and I can't thank him enough. You mentioned a minute ago the difference of preparing your body for this year. I mean, I, we, we talked about it at length last year, about just at the end of the year, because you hadn't expected to do what you had to do last year and play as much. What did you do, and what, what impacts – are you seeing from that and how fresh do you even feel right now considering where you're at yeah last year was definitely a learning experience um never never experienced a grueling 162 grind like that and getting to play every day on top of that um is hard on your body and and mentally as well so um just just had a really good off season um obviously you never want to get hurt during the year but i will say that the three weeks off helped my legs a lot and um Feeling great right now. Um, adrenaline's it's an amazing drug. So um, when we got full out, full stadiums, packed house, and you don't really feel a thing, you're just out there playing ball. Jonas, somebody, and I'm not going to say who, described you to me as a kind of a slow heartbeat guy. Um, a, would you agree? And B, what does that mean? Yeah, I think that seems pretty accurate. Um, I don't I, – for me, it's just trying to stay as level level as I could. Um, no, not try to get too up, not try to get too down. Just try to be steady and, and keep the same kind of rhythm or, or tempo that um, I've, I've always had. And, um, I don't try to get too worked up. Um, my wife thinks I have a temper, but I don't think I do. So, um, yeah, just trying to be the same guy no matter the situation or the circumstance. But the catcher – it's kind of the emotional backbone of a team on the field. And there have been times when you've shown emotion. So clearly it's okay to show emotion, but how does that how do you maintain control? That's a that's a good question. Um, yeah, I ask him. Um it, for me it's we we want emotion on the field. Um obviously we want to celebrate the good times and, and the and the good the good outings, but um we never want to be 
look too down. Like everybody's looking at us as a catcher, so we want to always be positive. Always, always want to just try to try to be that even even keel guy that's that everybody's looking at to make sure there's no panic or or nobody gets too down. So obviously, when we do something great, I'm going to let everybody know. I'm going to show emotion, but other than that, I'm just going to try to be the same same guy I've always been. It seems like this postseason, the starting pitching has been at a different level than it was in the regular season with Zavaldi, Montgomery, even Heaney when he went out there. Can you, from your vantage point, is there a palpable difference between the way they went out in the regular season and the postseason, and, and what is that difference if there is one? No, I think they've been the same guys that they've been all year. Um, uh, I think they've, from pitch one, they've been aggressive and they've been throwing strikes. I think when we can limit walks and um, I think we're a really good ball club. Um, I think there's a there's a different uh, emotion that comes into pitching in the playoffs, and um, they've answered the bell. Um, so it's it's been impressive to watch, and I'm glad I could be a part of it. So after after all these big outs, you guys have been getting you've been given a little fist bump or fist pump. Um, is is it relief? Is it excitement? Is it all the above? What are you feeling like in those moments? Uh, just excitement. Um, obviously, we we play. We started playing this game to play in big games and, and to win championships. So uh, each each out is a step closer to that goal, and um, especially the big ones. And it gets me fired up. And I know um, Bobby's been telling me I have to play with a little more fire and emotion. So I'm trying to give him that. Jonah, how would you characterize the rivalry between the Rangers and Astros? And are you aware of some of the animosity between the two fan bases and the two cities. I know every every series has been hard fought and, and, and tough and obviously it's two division rivals going at it in the postseason so it's gonna be even more special. So um, all I can say to the fans is try to be nice and no harsh words, I guess. I don't know. It's it's gonna it's it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be exciting and um, uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Um, th we have talked some about postseason Corey Seager. I'm just curious, like, what your experience has been with, like, postseason Nate Evaldi. I mean, if you look at his track record, I think it speaks for itself. Um, no matter the situation, no matter the, the game, it's, he's, he's going to be Nate. He's going to go out and he's going to do his thing. And um, you, saw it, you saw it the other night, seven perfect innings. Obviously not perfect, but in our eyes, they were pretty remarkable. And um, yeah, it continues to impress. And the moment never seems to be too big for him. He seems to relish. I, like, can you tell that a guy is relishing that moment? Yeah, I think that's as as a baseball player. That's what we play for is to be in those big moments and to have success. So um, he's proven that he's not scared of the moment, and he's always going to have success with it. Do you have to up your chatter game to rival <laughs> Martin Maldonado? No, I'm going to just stick to what I do best and try not to get uh, ahead of myself. You said it before the, that you, you know, always loved Texas. Where, where did that come from? I mean, you're from Buffalo. You're kind of you're kind of far from Texas. I know. I know. Crazy, right? Uh, I don't know. It was just growing up, I feel like UT was always on ESPN. And something about college baseball and the sound of the metal bats always drew it to me. And I, I don't know, I, the uniforms are cool, and um, just always thought Texas was something bigger than just a state. It just it meant something to me. And um, my dad being in the military, obviously a lot of a lot of military bases around here, and it's a big um, military state. So um, we spent maybe a month or two here, just my dad stationed here and just kind of fell in love with it. You were mentioning, you know, working with game plans and all that, but as far as working with different kind of pitchers, I mean, you, you've got a couple of Cy Young award winners in there. You've got some veterans, you've got some young guys, you've got Chapman who just throws 105 miles an hour, it seems like every pitch. Talk about how you've developed yourself working with different kinds of guys and how that has to change depending on who you're working with, or is it all the same? No, it's definitely not all the same. We know each pitcher has their own personality, and um, it's part of our job is to try to tame each one and and get them 
to do what works best for them, and that's our job to know that. So, um, like I said before, it's getting to know these guys just even before spring training even starts. Like what makes them tick, what they like, and and go from there. Who's the hardest thing? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. Thank you, John. Yeah, yeah. Did UT never offer you? <laughs> no. To Michigan State? Michigan State, yep. Right. But UT never offered you? Yeah.